Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Ephesians. In the sixth chapter, I believe I say it every week, I say one of my favorites, but again, it's one of my favorites, amen. Kind of like God is good, seems like I have so many favorites. But Ephesians chapter number six and verses number ten, very familiar scripture to you. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the blessed plate of righteousness, and your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fury darts of the wicked. We've been many times to the armor of God that you and I need. We all know and should know. If we don't know, we should know it, that every piece of this armor comes from the Word of God. The helmet of salvation, how do we get saved? Putting our faith and trust in the Word that that He gave us, amen. The helmet of salvation, we need to be grounded and rooted in Romans uh, chapter number 10, verses 8 through number 11. With the heart man believeth in the righteousness, with the mouth confession is made into salvation, that when that old devil tells us we ain't saved, we got something to tell him that we are, amen. We know that our loins girt about with truth, St. John 17 and 17 says, Sanctify thyself with truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, if you wrap yourself in the truth of the word of the gospel, amen, glory to God, it shall protect you. Amen. With the blessed plate of righteousness. Amen. What, what is righteousness? Doing what's right. Wh- where do we find out where to do what's right? We find out where to do what's right in the word of God, Brother Raymond. Is that right? Amen. If you and I always stand up and try to do what's right, it'll be a protection to you and I today. Amen. Praise God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Putting on the shield of faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God to protect ourselves against the fury darts of the wicked. Amen. Is that right? We all know that the Word of God, when you and I add it to our lives, we are adding on this armor of God. There, I, I don't think there's anybody here tonight that could, could, could say that wasn't so. Is that right? That's what we have to do. Amen. We have to do that. But we're going to look at a few things here tonight. I just wanted to lay that out there to you real quickly. And amen. Then we'll come back into this chapter. Amen. But if I could put a thought tonight, it would be this. Are you able? Are you able to stand and withstand for God in the evil day that is coming upon us? Are you able? That's the question that we find there, amen. It says that you may be able to stand. You know, we have the ability, we are able, amen, if we'll find out why, how we are able. You know, last week we preached a message to you, amen, about entitled The Door to the End. Amen, where it talks about pestilence and earthquakes and all those things, and it says, then. And it tells us, then the persecution of the church is coming. Amen, and I truly believe that's where we are at today. Amen, we've seen that door open. Amen, glory to God that the persecution of the church, we listed several things to you on Sunday. Amen, that is beginning to happen. I believe that was this past Sunday. Was that this past Sunday? Amen. But believe it or not, they some more happen in just the past few days. It seems like time is beginning to speed up very quickly for us, amen. And, and I want you to listen to this. It's a news article, amen. On Saturday at noon, uh, Christians gathered at a prayer event in Portland. 
Oregon. Now, if you remember in Portland, Oregon, if I'm not mistaken, that's where uh, they took over the police station and kept it for so long a period of time. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know that they believe in law and order too well. Amen. And there was a shocking video, and I saw that video. Amen. I always try to make sure that if I bring you anything, it's not, it's not just from one source. It's from two or three sources. And the reason for that, there's so much... Uh, that's not true today, but I saw this video, and there was a shocking video uh, taken, and it was showing what people believe to be Antifa, and the reason they believe them to be that is because they, just like Antifa has done in the past, they pulled them masks over their face, and toboggans, and all that kind of stuff, and black uniforms, and glory to God, and uh, they just came rolling into this church event, an outside event, carrying shields and weapons, the article said, and I saw those shields in the, in the video that I saw. And they started throwing flash bombs at everyone and macing people, also throwing rotten eggs. And they even threw a flash bomb into a group of kids ages four months to ten years old. I never thought, well, I, you know, the Bible tells us it was coming. He said that we were going to suffer persecution in these last days that you and I are living in, amen. But I never thought that I'd see, it, just, it seems unreal to me now that I see this happening. I don't know about you, but it does to me. I really thought most of the persecution that the church would uh, suffer today, at least for at the beginning, amen, would be uh, lawsuits and churches and laws trying to distribute against them, I never really imagined that I would see someone try to uh, dis get a, 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 an event, a prior, a prior event, amen, and try to shut it down by force. I never really thought I'd see that day. But I told you then that I thought we wasn't just looking in the door to then to see how that persecution was happening, but on Sunday we talked to you just a little bit about maybe that we had already stepped in that door. And some of that persecution beginning to happen. And in my mind, I, I see it right here. I, I don't know about you, but in my mind, I see it right here. We see also that a, an American pastor, uh, his name was Ray. Ray was arrested in London for preaching that homosexuality was sin. He was warned, he warned, be prepared for persecution. Be prepared for persecution. 3,462 Christians were murdered in Nigeria in 2021. We're in the eighth month of 2021. And 3,462 have been reported murdered. And this is not by a Christian organization that reported this. This is by a organization called the International Society for Civil Liberties and Rule of Law. I can't imagine that. I, I, you know, I, I can't imagine it. I, I, am, I am very upset with our Portland police. Now, they gave a report. It, it, said, it said that they didn't intervene, but they gave a report that they never made it to the scene until something happened. If they did... They ought to be put in jail themselves for not doing something about it. If they're not going to be our police, they, they need to stand up and be what they're paid to do. If not, they need to go home. They need to go home. You and I today, amen, uh, we are seeing many things happen. If you're not ready to meet Jesus, you better get ready. If, if, you, if you're not strong in the Lord, you better get strong. Because I believe these last days, we're going to see some persecution in this land that you and I live in. It may be not knocking at the, our door right yet, but I, I, I believe we can, we can hear almost hear the footsteps. We can almost hear the footsteps. But the real question is today, are we able to stand and withstand for God? The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, and put on the whole armor of God, 
that ye may be able to stand. And what does the word stand mean? In the Strong's Concordance, giving us the Hebrew word, you know I can't pronounce it, but I'll give you the Strong's number. It's 2476. And it means to abide, to appoint, to bring, to continue, to establish, to hold up, to present, to set up, to stand, by, forth, still, and up. And, and I put, beside every one of these little definitions here, here you know, you know ab abide, bring, continue, establish, holding up, presenting, and setting up, I, I put a little comment beside of them. To stand means this to me, to abide in Him and His Word. Amen. It means to bring up His name when it's not popular. It means to continue in the things that you and I have learned. Amen. Amen. I, I believe that's what it, it means to stand for God in this evil day that is coming upon us. Amen. It means to establish, to be established in His will. Amen. Amen. It, it means to hold up his cross. Amen. It means to present His gospel. It means to set up His church. Amen. I believe that's what it means to stand for God. I believe that you and I need to abide in the Word of God. And what does the word withstand mean? It is 436 in your strongs. And it means to stand against. It means to oppose. And it means to resist. So if stand means these other things, then glory to God, I believe for you and I to stand and withstand in this evil day that you and I have got to stand against sin. That you and I have to oppose hypocrisy, I mean heresy, amen. That you and I have to resist the temptations and the trials of this life, amen. I believe that's what it means to stand and withstand for God in this evil day that is approaching upon us, amen. These things are what we need to do to be able to stand and withstand for God, to abide within His Word. So I suppose the really big question is this. Are you able to stand? Are you able to stand in this evil day? How do we get able to stand for God in this evil day? The Bible plainly tells us. That's the good thing about it, isn't it? Amen. I like it because the Bible is a book of answers for our questions. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How do we get able to stand and withstand? Uh, Ephesians 6 and 10 tells us, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand. Amen. We're going to have to put on the Word of God. Amen. Because that's what all the armor comes from. It comes from the Word of the living God. You and I are going to have to put it on. And you say, Brother Jimmy, how do I put on the Word? How do I put it on? The word put on is 1746 in your Strong's. And it's not been long since we visited this word in another piece of Scripture. And, it, and you'll recognize it when I read the definition. It means in the sense of sinking into a garment. Amen. To invest with clothing to array, to clothe, to endure, to have, to put on. And I looked up the word put in Webster's Dictionary. And boy, did I love what it said. Put means to make in a certain place, to be made, to make be in a certain place or position. Now let me repeat that if you're writing that down. When you put something somewhere, you're making it to be in a certain place or position. It means to make be in a certain condition. It means to push with force or thrust. 
Mm, I'm liking this. It means to give or to sign or to attach. And church, I'm here to tell you today, for you and I to put on the whole armor of God, we're going to have to make ourselves be in a certain place and position. We're going to have to make ourselves be, whether it's hard or not, in the house of God, opening up the book, doing what God would have us to, living how God would have us to live in this life. Amen. To make ourselves be in a certain condition in God's holy will living what the word of God tells us to live in this life if you want to put on the whole armor of God you got to put on his word amen it's going to take a push how many of y'all ever had to push yourself somebody say amen how many of you have to push yourself with force to do what to do what you know that you need to do? How many of you ever have to give yourself a little kick, amen, to read like you need to read, amen? How many of you know the only morning you can ever sleep in is Sunday morning? It's the truth. It's the gospel truth. I can't sleep by 7 o'clock. Never do through the week, amen. But glory to God, and Sunday gets here every time. It's past seven when I get up hardly. Just about, not always, but just about. We've got a little helper. Somebody say amen. And I know what his name is. I believe we preached a sermon on him one time. A, a, a helpful little booger. Somebody say Amen. The old devil, the Beelzebub, what are all the names that he's got? I, I'm here to tell you today, church, uh, that you and I today, uh, amen, are going to have to put on. Amen. What does it mean to be able? 14.10 means to be able or possible. How many of y'all remember what... what Jesus told Peter when he told him that the devil desired, desired to sift him as wheat? Huh? Yeah, that's right. He all though, right after that, he said, after you've uh, been restored. You remember that? I'm here to tell you, with the armor's taken down, you and I have got a hard time. Somebody say Amen. You and I have got a hard time. You see, the only way to put on the whole armor of God and to be strong in the Lord so we can stand and withstand in this evil day and listen to what I'm about ready to tell you. Look at the bright, shiny thing. The only way that you and I can really stand, in other words, to abide, to bring, to continue, to establish, to hold up, to present, to set up, to... to, to, to be set up, amen. Glory to God. The only way you and I can do those things, the only way that you and I can do those things is you and I are going to have to stop being a hearer. How many of y'all ever guilty of, well, I won't ask that question. You know, sometimes I believe we hear what we want to hear. Somebody say amen. I really do. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter number 6 and 46, and I want to read this to you. For that, I, all, I, all I know that about to be a hearer of the Word and doer of the Word, but I want you to catch what this verse is saying. Luke 6 and 46, and I'll give you time to get there. I promise I'm going to get me a drink of water and everything. I went kind of slow. I've tried. Look what this verse says. Are you ready? And why call ye me Lord, Lord? How many of y'all remember what Lord meant? I didn't look it up right here because it ain't been long since I've done it. We preach the message, if you want to get the victory, you need to let the Lord be Lord. Amen. Be the final authority in our lives. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The supreme authority. That's what Lord meant, one of the definitions. Amen. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do, and do not the things which I say? 
Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built his house upon the what? And, and diggeth deep and laid the foundation upon a rock. And when the floods arose and the stream beat firmly upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon the rock. What did it do? It stood. Somebody say amen. And it withstood. Amen. And why did it stand and withstand? Because he said it's like the man that heareth the words he says and doeth them. Amen. Amen. That's what you and I have got to do to stand for God. We've got to do what he says. How many of you admit to me that every once in a while you got here and like all men do? <laughs> Y'all men are laughing. You know what I'm talking about. That selective hearing. Amen? Yeah, Brother Tony, go ahead and say yes because Katrina is right there. I'm just kidding. She's not, but. Listen at me. You and I today, amen. It's not sometimes that we mean to, but so many times those things that we don't really want to hear, we don't really muse over them very much. Those things that we don't want to enact too well, we don't get too excited about trying to put them on and put them to work in our lives. In other words, to make be, to take a place and a condition we don't really push on it that much. We don't really push on it with force to make ourselves be what God would have us to be. But it's going to be extremely important to be what God would have you to be in these last days. Or what I believe to be the last days. I believe it's going to be real important. You see, it used to be popular in the United States of America to be a Christian. It's not today, and it's going to get less unpopular. It's going to get less popular. It used to be a majority of our country was a Christian nation, and it's not anymore. If you know your statistics, you would know that it's less than 50% who say they believe in Jehovah God. You and I today, you and I today, who else is going to stand for God if we don't? Who else is going to withstand this evil day if you and I don't? The world needs to see Jesus. You and I need to be a light to a lost and dying world. Amen. When, you know when i seen Jesus the best, so when he said he opened Donnie's mouth. There's some rough days coming. There's some rough days coming. You and I today, I, I'm not trying to be discouraging to you. We had some AP classes here recently, amen, and that's what they were. And that's what I call them because I'm here to tell you, if you're able to do them, you're, you're an advanced pupil in Christ Jesus. It's a true statement. Ready for advanced placement in His army. And I know it's not popular. I know it's not what a lot of people want to hear. But it is exactly what the Word of God says. And I do mean exactly. See, the last days has been upon us for a long time. But it's getting real close to that time. You say, Brother Jimmy, when is it? I have no idea, and nobody does. If there's somebody who tells you that does, go ahead and stand up and call them a liar, because that's what they are. Because the Bible says, and you say, Brother Jimmy, that's a harsh word. Yes, it is. But the Bible says, no man knoweth the hour or the day. So what does that make them? That's exactly right. 
Don't be fooled. Jesus is not going to set foot on this earth the next step. He's going to part in the eastern sky. And the church is going to the house. Amen. 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 So when they call and tell you Jesus is here, Jesus is there, amen, as they t- tell us in the book of Luke, we need not believe that. Amen. Whether they call fire down from heaven or not. Right. Amen. What did Paul tell Timothy? I believe it was Timothy, amen, when he wrote. He said, if it be an angel or me or somebody else, amen, and to any other gospel, then don't believe them. Right. Do not believe them. Church, I know who we are. But that's where I think we are. You say, Brother Jim, you ever been wrong? Yes. <laughs> Be lying to you if I wasn't, Brother Abel. But it's what it sure looks like to me. I've never seen a time where some group come and tried to break up a Christian event, a prayer meeting. Never seen that. I can't imagine the only immorality of trying to throw a flash bomb. I mean, those things can be a little bit dangerous. And and trying to throw that into a group of children. How ungodly and unholy are you? But this is the day and time that we live in. It is the day and time that we live in. For some reason, I feel like I've missed something. Oh, there it is. I wondered why. I'm not trying to get on any particular thing, but something that come across in the news that just blew my mind. And it's, it's the way that persecution is going to be opened up on the church. And I want to read this one thing to you, and I'll close. And it says, the American Medical Association. How many of you know the American Medical Association? The American Medical Association is recommending the removal of sex from birth certificates. In a move, it says, will prevent discrimination based on gender identity, but that critics say it is anti-scientific, anti-science. Seems like it to me. Seems like it to me. Makes no sense to me, does it you? God promised me a sound mind, and apparently He didn't promise that sinners that. Because they've not got one. I've never had, you know, never had a problem telling them what gender I was. And for most people, I've not got a problem telling them what gender they are. But today... I have no idea, brother. Brother, there's going to be a lot of people surprised when they stand before God because he said, we'll say, we prophesied in your name. We've done it, and he said, depart from me because I never knew you. There's a lot today that claim to know Jesus, but I don't believe they do because the Bible, if they did, they wouldn't be calling seeing something that it's not. And they couldn't do what they're doing. When I fall short, God whoops me. How about you? When I don't do what I need to do, does God whoop you? He sure does me. And it don't take me long to figure it out. God loves us today. You say, Brother Jimmy, why why are we preaching hard to, uh, to, to the backbone of the church, to the faithful, to the Wednesday night crowd? I I suppose because we're going to have to be that much stronger. I don't know. And we need to be reminded what it takes to stand for God. It takes the Word of God. And it takes putting it on. It takes pushing it in our lives to activate it, to apply it to our lives. It takes takes a push. You ever have to... I have to push myself. Do you? Sometimes. I do. I'm going to be honest with you. I have to. I like to get down where the rubber meets the road, don't you? Amen. Amen. There's times that I don't want to treat somebody the way the Bible tells me to treat them, but 
I have to push myself to do that. Amen. After they've just put a few adjectives in front of my name, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to pray for them too good, but that's what I need to do. Somebody say amen. amen. And if I go and I do that prayer, it's not long before I got the right attitude. Somebody say amen. amen. And my heart wants to do it. Somebody say amen. And why? Because the presence of the Lord has entered in and it changed everything. Amen. Changes everything and everything about me. That's what it takes in this day and time that we're in. 